Uh, Chris, can you just kind of walk us through a little bit where you are in terms of numbers, where you've been over the past week? What you, do, you, do you test daily at this point? What are you going through right now? Well, we're just trying to uh, get the guys that, uh, that had it uh, back. Um, obviously, the ACC changed their guidelines, uh, which helps the time frame a little bit. Uh, but we've tried to use these ga days since the guys came back from Christmas break uh, to get in shape and prepare for Wake Forest. Can you give us a sense of how many players you expect to have available tomorrow? Um, we'll have almost everybody available. Now, where they are conditioning-wise, um, you know, uh, obviously we miss Malik at Western Kentucky, uh, but Malik has been full go since we returned as a team. But we have other guys that are at different stages. So even though they may get released the day of the game and are free to be available, you're talking about, in certain cases, eight or nine days with not having done anything, you know, from cardio to practice. Um, so it's, while they may be available, they may look a little different. Their availability may, may not be as great. How quickly does a player get out of shape when just from laying off? Um, it's been my experience with this, um, with COVID, that it depends on how symptomatic they were. You know, some guys come back with a chest cold or like a, a chest cough, and some guys come back where they didn't have any symptoms. And, um, you know, it's still tough if you're removed from doing physical activity for a week or, uh, or longer. But um, it really depends on how symptomatic they were. Can you tell us how many symptomatic guys you had? multiple. Chris, this is a time of year, no school. You know, if you guys are full go, you can really dive into basketball. Teams can get a lot better during this time of year. How much did this pause hurt you guys in that regard, or is that a little bit overrated? No, I mean, it's definitely a great time to get, you know, extra reps in the gym, you know, get guys caught up, try to improve them, not having to worry about, uh, they don't have to worry about uh, classes, homework, exams, I mean, it's all ball. Um, so we have a little bit of that time remaining, not as much as we would have liked. Um, the biggest thing for us is, is getting our guys back in shape. Uh, a few of them we don't have to worry about as much because they weren't ever out. Um, you know, we didn't practice, what, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we didn't practice for eight days, you know, so guys were able to do a, a little bit on their own uh, that were healthy. And uh, like I said, we tried to use these last three days to get our win back. With, with the way that this thing is now in college basketball, once again, you see games left and right getting postponed, canceled, all of this stuff. Do you guys have to maybe, or, or maybe you already were doing that, go back to uh, stricter protocols and guidelines and all of that stuff just to try to get through it? I don't know how much that stuff works. Everybody around the country is getting it. Try to do what we can. Do you see any possibility of the Kentucky game being rescheduled? Uh, Tim, I have no idea. I mean, you know, to, to hear that we didn't want to play Kentucky or we ducked them, I mean, it's like uh, we have bigger problems than that. We have guys that can't practice for eight or nine days. You know, it's, um, uh, it's, a, it's a really good, uh, you know, net game for us. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's an incredible rivalry. Guys get really juiced to play the game, uh, but you know we weren't able to. And uh, I don't know in terms of like making it up. You know, I looked at their schedule as soon as um, this was sort of on the horizon about not playing the game. And the only break they had um, during their conference season, they had a game scheduled with Kansas. You know, and so uh, it really is going to depend on games that we get that we lose because of other people having COVID. Same thing with UK and being able to materialize that game in, in such a short notice. Uh, and if we can, we will. But uh, I don't know if you're asking for a percentage, I have no idea. Chris, uh, obviously you guys had the two in-season pauses uh, last season and first game back didn't really fare too well. Was there anything that you guys took from those pauses in order to make sure that this game against Wake Forest doesn't end up like those two games versus Wisconsin and North Carolina? I mean, I think back to when we played Wisconsin and uh, we didn't have 
you know, arguably the best player in the league. Uh, Jalen Withers, you know, played like six minutes. Um, you know, he was exhausted. It's just um, getting our guys back in shape is the biggest challenge that you have. And, you know, you try to speed that up as much as you can. You know, we practiced um, hard on Sunday night. We practiced um, twice yesterday. Uh, we're not going to go twice to the day before the game, but just trying to get our guys win back as best we can. Uh, that'll give us the, the best opportunity uh, to be very competitive against a good Wake Forest team. And make no mistake, we're playing to win. And uh, I believe that we can, but we're going to have to play really well. Um, and we didn't play well in those two experiences that you mentioned a year ago. Th th those are a lot different circumstances than, than what I think we're dealing with now. Chris, you said last week you had, um, you had several guys who had gotten the booster. Do you know if more went and did it as a result of this? A few more. I mean, I, you know, knock on wood, I don't feel like between guys that got sick, um, that contracted it, and guys that are boosted, I don't think that we'll have any program shutdowns from here on out. Uh, which is a great thing, uh, but it's, it's certainly not a certainty. But I feel like we have enough guys that have either had it or have gotten the booster that we're in a really good spot. You want to ask about Wake Forest? Yeah, I was going to say. Basketball team? Or like, I, I was going to say. You know, talk about protocols and what, what? COVID and masking and all that stuff. We can keep going down that line, but. It's really like nauseating at this point. You know, we're in season three, college basketball dealing with this. Like, and I know it's everybody's job to talk about it, but it's like, you know, seeing entering protocol, you know, on your timeline over and over and over. Like, let's talk about the game. Well, what about Wake Forest? What they're, did you see? They're really good. You know, they have one of the best players uh, in our conference, in Alondis Williams. Uh, amazing the, tran the, the transformation he's made as a player from Oklahoma to now. I mean, he's averaging over 20 a game. Uh, he's by far the best passer we've played all year. Um, their guys play with an aggressiveness, a confidence, and uh, it's going to be a big challenge uh, for us tomorrow night. Chris, you said um, going into the break that if Malik couldn't start, you felt like Rose was your starting center now, that he would be your number one backup if Malik can't start. Is, he ready to, is, is Malik ready to start? Tomorrow, and then in addition, just just what what led you guys to that decision about Rose? Um, Malik is ready to start. Um, he'll he'll be the starter tomorrow night. Uh, Rose, just as I've said before, he has the best combination of hands, athleticism. Uh, he makes a million mistakes. Um, the, the times he makes the same mistakes over and over are, are frustrating. He's a freshman, but you know he's he's got to grow through those and. Uh, we have to be able to stay on him to correct those things. But, um, you know, he's big. He's, um, he's athletic. He rebounds in traffic. And, you know, you can't teach that. You know, if a, if a kid isn't um, nasty in traffic, and, and you can try to bring it out of him, but Rose has that instinctually. And uh, we need that. You know, we need that at the center position. He's an excellent finisher on rolls. Um, you've seen that with a few of the dunks he's had. And he doesn't have a lot of experience yet. So we want to keep feeding his, him as much experience as we can. And then what does that mean for how you will use Jalen? Uh, Jalen's got to play better. You know, his, his effort uh, on the offensive glass uh, has to show. Um, his ability to take care of the ball has shown it. And if he does those two things, um, then, then his minutes will grow. And he'll play a, a little bit of both of those positions, both the four and the five. Uh, and as, as he plays well and as he plays effective, uh, his time will grow. And I, I don't know which position, but it'll grow. And you see so much more of these players in practice than, than we would ever have an opportunity to. You're always uh, welcome to come to practice, Tim. Okay. I'm going to take you up on that. Uh, Practices but, have always been open. But uh, are, there, are there things as, as a coach that you look for specifically from, from individual players as far as you know, giving them more minutes, what they have to do, that do they understand what their thresholds are, I guess, is what Well, I'm I asking. think as a coach, you know, what, what you want is consistency. I think I've said this before. I've got to know um, what to expect when a guy either enters the game or starts the game. 
and that, that's been the head-scratching part is the consistency of a few of our guys. And, you know, each of them have strengths and, and, and talents and weaknesses and, you know, maximizing those um, and, and being consistent is, is the key to extending time and getting more time. Coach can trust you. He can rely on you uh, and know, knows what he's getting when he puts you in the game. Are there players who are different in practice than they are in games? Um, again, I think the performance of, of the, it being inconsistent or consistent is relatively consistent in both areas. <laughs> if that makes sense. Thanks, guys. Okay.